coming fast enough, you have to become your own first responder. In the case of self-defense, I wanted to show you how to use a walking stick. Now the walking stick traditionally is about 36 inches. You can have something a little bit shorter or longer. This is a dowel rod that I turn into a homemade walking stick for purposes of training. And if you want one of these, I have a link below, or you can go to the Home Depot or Lowe's, any kind of do-it-yourself store and pick these up. Make sure you get it in a hardwood like oak or hickory. Um, the poplar is just too soft or white oak, white, um, not oak, the uh, white pine would be too soft. So avoid those. But this is an inch and a quarter and you sand it really well to get all of those splinters out of it and then soak it in a good oil like butcher block oil. Simple as that. It's less than $10 or $15. I keep going up. I keep forgetting. These are about $12 now and then all the other stuff. A little bit of elbow uh, grease a little bit of sweat equity, and then you have your own homemade self-defense walking stick. But I want to talk about when no help is coming or the help might be too late in coming, you can defend yourself with the homemade walking stick. And also, hello, Matthew. Hello, G. Carlton. Good to see you. Also is the same length as a good umbrella. If you have a good, like, golf umbrella, a nice umbrella, not inexpensive. They're not that expensive, though, like 20 30 bucks. You can get something that's very sturdy, made not to break very easily, and you can do all of these moves with this. A lot of these techniques come from using the Okinawan or Japanese Hanbo. Hello, Garrett, Garrett. <clears throat> excuse me, it's good to see you. Um, I just came out of doing something, a hard workout, so my brain's rushing a little fast, my mouth's moving faster than I can think. Anyway, so we're gonna show you Sword fit Fighter, it's good to see you. Some of the basic techniques that you can do for self-defense using homemade walking stick, or for some people who, um, you know, if you've been watching the news lately, there's been a lot of horrific events um, where people had to defend their communities. And in the case, a lot of these techniques that I learned started with using an M16. And so you use the M16, you run out of bullets, or, or they get too close, they're through the wire, they're in your face, you've gotta use it the way I'm gonna show you now. So the first technique I'm gonna show you is how to get it into action for self-defense. And I'm gonna have it in my right hand. Your left foot's gonna be forward, and then I'm just gonna bend the knees a little bit so that my hand can slide down the back. And when it's sliding down the back, the web between your finger and your thumb, Hello, Air Guns Anonymous, good to see you again. Garen, nice to see you. Your hand slides down here and you're going to push straight forward and bring it up into his teeth, his nose, his eyes. We're going to use principles of self-defense. The question is what can you remove or destroy his ability to see, breathe temporarily or permanently, his ability to breathe and stand up by hitting him the solar plexus going down in that center line of the body, you can hit between the belly button and the privates, that thin fascia of muscle, and it's just the same thing as a punch. You would stick it right into his face for self-defense. Your arm goes straight, you're turning through your shoulders and hips, and you're moving forward. Hello, Dan, it's good to see you. You're turning, striking, pushing, hitting as hard and as fast as you can for self-defense to immediately stop him in his tracks. Now, from this position, I can bring it into my other hand simply by pulling your hand back to your ear like you're answering your phone, that gets it in the front hand, and then it becomes a thrust with two hands. And again, all of these motions, you wanna stop when no help is coming, and you have to be your own first responder, you have to defend yourself with a homemade walking stick or the self-defense walking stick, you want to do as a few strikes as you possibly can. So in other words, if you're gonna hit him one time and end the fight, bring it up between the, down over his head, if you can do something like that, and create so much damage for self-defense and stop the fight. That's what you want. Hello, Alita, it's good to see you. So the first motion, think about putting it in either hand that you walk with. You bend the knees to get behind it, lower yourself. The other benefit of bending this way is that you're loading up your legs, these springs. When you unload, you're going to have all that force and all that power coming into that first strike. So your first technique that you can practice with your homemade walking stick, a dowel rod, or your umbrella, your walking cane, your walking stick, your hiking pole, anything that is about this long. This one's 36 inches, be longer or shorter depending on what you have to use. Just that basic thrust, thinking about what can you remove or destroy. Sight, breathing, ability to stand. You hit them right here, you're gonna put them on the ground really fast, strike them right there. The second thing from this position that I want you to see is that after that strike, you pull it back and then you step and you're gonna thrust 
with two hands coming through, again, the center of his body. Think about what's in the center of the body. That's where all the vital organs are going to be. That's where you're going to create the most immediate explosive damage for self-defense that you possibly can by coming in. Also, if he's trying to move in and close the distance and get you, maybe he's got another weapon or he's, gonna, he's bigger, maybe there are multiple opponents, and he's trying to come in at you, you sticking it in his face is going to force him to either move back or you're going to hit him and you're going to knock him to the ground. Now, from this position, I want you to slide your hand forward or pull this hand back. Either one, I do probably would do both at the same time because you've been practicing so long, it just becomes natural. But your hand goes forward, allowing you now to use this as a pivot point. And instead of letting it go, you're going to slide it down. And you saw the second way was a lot faster than the first. Um, the question was, so the stick should be fairly lightweight. The interesting thing about these self-defense sticks that I make here, because I soak them so long in butcher block oil, they absorb an enormous amount. I find that butcher block oil, of all the oils I've used, is the best for absorption. And then this becomes extremely heavy. You wouldn't believe how heavy this is. This doesn't feel like a normal piece of wood. This feels more like a piece of ironwood, if you're familiar with an ironwood. Uh, so, you, and that means it's also more flexible and less likely to break. Um, Greg, I'm not sure if you're asking me why or you're asking the question about the tip. So if your hand slides to the front, the back hand, the front hand again becomes your pivot point where you're turning this way. And notice how your hand, your palm ends facing up. It's coming down and twisting, but at the same time, your back hand, this is your right hand, your right hand is pushing along the stick and it's allowing it to come forward. The reason you might wanna put a tip on it to answer that question, Greg, is if you put a brass tip, you can get a brass tip that's an inch and a quarter, which is how thick this is, and then it would go up to about here, and then you can either tack it in. Some have tacks or screws on the bottom. Some are just a, kind of a pressure fit. But when you get that on there, this would add weight. This would also, wood's gonna split. So when you, if you use it as a walking stick, it's gonna split and chip up a little bit. You put that brass on there, then the brass is gonna take a good beating. The brass will get scratched up a little bit, but it'll look nice. And when you hit something, you're going to create a lot more damage. You can break his nose, his teeth down his throat. The throat will crush for self-defense as well. That's a fatal strike. So you want to make sure that it's the right, appropriate. It's life or death. That's what we're talking about. When no help is coming, when it's you or him, he's trying to steal your life, your dignity, your freedom, try to hurt your family. Then you're going to stick this in his face and then slide this down. Now, when you slide it down, try to keep your hands separated. If you bring your hands together, you create a pivot point, and if you miss, then your stick is on the ground, he closes the distance, stabs you with his knife, you're in big trouble. But if you can bring it down here, see where that finishes, then you can step in, you can thrust, pull here, you can strike, you can use it just like you would use a traditional Japanese sword with the hands open and separated there. So all these come from this first technique where you're sliding down the back. There's one more I want you to see. From here, that's this lift. Just like you're going to throw almost like an uppercut, a good uppercut's going to come up and in, breaking his jaw. But this uppercut just comes straight up, and the stick is now coming out of the back of your hand, bringing this like this straight up. You bring it here, you can turn and bring it to the side. The question that, um, that I see you asking is if you're adding um, some weight to the... Uh, to the stick by adding lead shot or balls um, or metal or whatever. I don't find it completely necessary. And my only warning would be if you're not as strong as you used to be, or if you're regaining your strength, I wouldn't go too heavy soon. I would start light and then work myself up to something heavy. And it really doesn't have to be that heavy. The techniques that are going to be most effective for you in self-defense are these thrusting straightforward techniques, because he's going to have to come around this, to get in. If you try to focus only on these swinging techniques or these angular strikes coming through, whether it's with this grip or with some of the other grips that I'm going to show you in a minute, then if, if you're um, focused too much on the weight of the sword, or not the sword, the weight of the, your stick, your homemade walking stick, then um, you're kind of missing the point. And it's, you're not going to be as effective. The most effective, in my opinion, of all these techniques it's going to be any kind of straightforward thrust between you and your opponent coming 
you and the bad guy coming straight in, stopping him in his tracks, preferably in his nose, his teeth, his throat, his chest, something straight. Greg said he's 69, needs something who walks to YMCA in the morning. Absolutely, Greg, and I agree. And even, Greg, if you had a nice walking stick, the Irish Shalala is a really great walking stick. It does have a weighted, usually they, it has a big knob, knob on the end, a big knot. They usually put some lead shot in there when they seal it up. And it's made out of a very hard root, usually, or a piece of wood. And that, that would be very effective. Or you could use an umbrella. I see the umbrellas that we use at the church and the school when we walk people out to the cars and it's raining. I, I made a video, there's a video on here, where I showed you how indestructible that thing is. And it's the exact same length as this stick. And it's just as effective if I'm using it in these thrusting motions. And the nice thing about the, I think it's called the fennel, the pointed tip on the end of an umbrella is very, it's very small, so it's very effective to come in and strike. Uh, so Garrett asks, can I demonstrate combo with your stick, samurai sword? I can, we can do, we can do sword stuff. I do have some um, samurai or, uh, I'm gonna move the camera a little bit, I want you to see more of the bag. Samurai swords, and I'm gonna lower it. I do, I think they're, I left them, the, I used the boken, the Japanese wooden sword. So if you look on the, you put my last name and you Google or you look on YouTube for the Boken, then I have some sword combinations you can practice using the Japanese sword. But I wanna get back to the walking stick because the first way is coming here. I showed you that you can lift this up and if this is his private parts, his groin, I think you can see, let me move the camera one more time. I try to give you a little bit of warning so you can close your eyes if you get nauseous. But let's say that's his, his privates. He's a, he's a bit taller than most, but you can get the point. You just bring it up right between his legs. From here, you can bring it across the body. If you want it to go into his knee or his, uh, his femur, his leg or his lower leg, if you want it to bring it into the side of his head for self-defense, you can do all those from this first position. Now, the second position I'm gonna show you is that your hand is gonna start here and slide down the front. And that's gonna put it more into this position, which is more like that traditional sword. So from here, we went behind it. Now we're gonna, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna bend the knees. And then as I come up, I'm gonna point my thumb at the threat. When I point my thumb at the threat, it gets it into that front hand. And then I want you to immediately thrust and stick it right through his teeth or his nose or his throat or his um, solar plexus. Yeah, Garen says, get the tension, um, tension, the Japanese name, the walking cane. There, there's so many great different options that you can get, stylish options from Cold Steel, from other makers like that, that are extremely durable and, and serve the purpose of self-defense. Uh, but you can do this too. Again, if you want one of the ones that I make, I put a link below, they're not that expensive, or you can save all your money, go to the store, spend about 12, 15 bucks, Get yourself three, three grits of sandpaper. I have many videos here. If you wanna learn how to make this yourself, sand it really well. Start with 80 grit, go to 120, go to 220. At the end, sand it for about two or three minutes. If, if you don't know how to sand, uh, Google it, right? Learn how to sand and then stick it right into the oil. Let it sit there or oil it up with a rag. Get it really heavy on there. Come back to it two or three or four times over a period of three or four days and then wipe it off and you're gonna feel how heavy and how strong this is. Yeah, and, and like you said, so, uh, sticks are easy to find everywhere. So you're, you're using it the same way, you're gonna go down the front, your knees bend, and then as you come up, you point your thumb, and then you're stepping. This step allows you to use the entire weight of your body. For me this morning, it was 255 pounds. <laughs> I'm in a, a gaining phase, it's not on purpose, I don't know what's happening. I think it's the weather's changing, I'm holding water, which is fine, because I always hit harder when I weigh more. You do too. You're gonna hear, you're gonna point your thumb, and you're gonna step and thrust. And as you thrust, see how your hands kind of turn a little bit? This turning motion is gonna lock this. You're gonna get what's called a tendon lock here, and that's gonna allow you to push your whole body weight through. If you don't do that, your hands will come back. If you do this, it's gonna go through his body. And he's gonna, it's not gonna pierce his body because it's a dull piece of wood on the end, but all the force, that 255 pounds for me, 
in motion, multiplies, becomes way more than 255, and it's all generated or concentrated there on the tip. Now you stick that in a solar plexus, knock his wind out, or again, this is a fatal strike. That'll crush, the, the, the only 12, 8 to 12 pounds of pressure will crush that cartilage there, and then it's, it's over for him. For self-defense, that's a fatal move, so make sure it's a uh, fatal move, or make sure it's appropriate teeth down his throat nose but like i said this is about when no one is coming or when the help is going to be too far away so from here i'm here i slide down i point that thumb it's as simple as that you got to practice this over and over so it goes right to your hand step and thrust and from this position i'm going to slide that hand down this hand turns this time and then there's that finishing strike right to the center of his forehead turn off his operating system, and then lights out. You win for self-defense. You don't have to worry about him getting up off the ground after something like that, in the most cases. If it's life or death, your life, is, he's, the, he's the thug, punk, criminal, terrorist, you name it. Whatever the situation is, and you have to defend yourself because no one is coming or help is going to be too late. And we saw great examples of that earlier, or sadly, last weekend. And now the whole world is seemingly on fire. So we're here. We push. We thrust, we pull this back hand. You're going to turn this back hand under so it gets to the other side. This front hand goes to the top. So it's this motion here. And you can, you can practice that just going back and forth. Only thing to remember is the hands are facing opposite directions. So when your right hand is palm down, your left hand is palm up. And then when your left hand is palm down, your right hand can slide as this becomes that pivot point again from that first series of strikes. Bring this down and then increasing the speed and the strike, the, the uh, power of the thrust. Now, let's say you need a cane or a walking stick for mobility and you still, in other words, if you pick up your cane, take it off the floor while you're standing on it, you're going to fall to the ground. So this is a cane someone brought in recently. Yeah, Garen's talking about Ironside. You'll love the old Ironside. Um, leaning on your cane or leaning on your walking stick using the other stick same thing bend those knees you can bring this up stick that right between his groin like we did in that last when we had the hand in the other position bring that up here bring it down on top from your shoulder around the other side taking out the knee all while holding your weight here thrusting right through the middle and if you're again all you're trying to do is get this into his face so that you can stop him from moving forward long enough that you can retract it and then do a follow-up strike. Or maybe that's enough to push him back. If you're so fast and explosive with this motion, it doesn't take much for this hard piece of wood to smash the teeth and stick it down his throat for self-defense. So you, the point is you can do all these motions with one hand just like you can with two hands. Now the benefit of two hands, if you're able to, is that if you have two hands on your stick, it's gonna be harder for him to take it out of your hands. If he does grab onto your stick, I want you to lock it to your hip like this and then make a turning motion with your hips. Notice that my hand is also making a turning motion. So I turn away, he's gonna to try to pull me back. When he does, I'm gonna go with that. And his hands are gonna be twisted like this and then when I'm at the top, I'm gonna to push down from here with my whole body. Now I made a video recently using the cane with grabbing the cane. If you wanna go back and see that, what happens when, and, and, and I show you, I have one of my students, he's uh, in his 70s. We've been practicing in a while. He's getting good at it. He puts the cane on the hip, he turns and then he pushes down. He's even better, that was like three or four weeks ago. He's even better now. And you'll be better too with more and more practice. So if someone does try to grab your cane, get it locked to your hip because if it's out here, you're playing tug of war with your arms. If his arms are stronger than yours, you're gonna lose. You put it here, now he's pulling against your body weight. And for me, again, that's 255 pounds. He's gonna have a hard time pulling it out of my hand or getting me to move. I'm gonna let him have it. I'm gonna move forward with him as I turn and I'm gonna smash down and then I'm gonna step in and smash it right through his teeth or his throat for self-defense. <laughs> Steve says, what happens if they grab the sword cane? That's a great uh, joke, good question. Um, obviously, you win that one. Uh, Greg says, mom's favorite weapon in the grocery store was a broom. Yeah, brooms are one of the best 
self-defense tools that you can find, brooms, mop handles, rake handles, any type of um, gardening tool because those are usually hardened woods. Since I am it, great to see you. Um, I've been super busy. I hope you've been busy too with your, since Amit has a new book out, so if you haven't seen it, go find it. It's on uh, Amazon, since Amit. It's all about the martial arts. It's a great read. I just started it. I have, um, I downloaded it, I think two weeks ago, but I've just been crazy busy. Anyway, go read his book and uh, follow him on his channel. He should be easy to find, since Amit is a great martial artist. All right, so we have this turning, pushing, from this position, slide down the front, bend the knees with it, bring it up. You can push in here. I want you to also think about stepping and smashing this hard piece of wood through his teeth, through his chest, through his body, or pushing to the sides. Now, you have a split grip here. This still works. A lot of times people think you can only smash like this in this push-up grip, but you can't. This, this is very effective. You're going to be able to smash and hit hard. You have both hands in different directions. And, and, and think about what this is. It's a hard piece of oak, and that's his teeth going down his throat, or his nose smashing. Think about how easy it is to, if you've ever had your nose hit really hard, or into his eyes, or through the throat. You're at least gonna push him back. Once you push him back, pull it down, and then stick it through his, his stomach. Or push it in, step back to the other side, just like a rifle butt strike, bring it in over the top. Now that I'm here, I can finish, again, by pulling the hands down and using all the power Coming here, smashing, and uh, in the fight. Since Emmett, that's awesome. Congratulations on all those great successes. Good things come to good people, and uh, you're a testament to that. So that's awesome to hear. So from here, you can bring it up under his body, bring it down here, down there. And this is just a few techniques that you can do. If you focus instead, yeah, Garen says that's the same grip for your, for your deadlift for you power lifters out there. If you think about, it's also a good way to get better at pull-ups. If you've been looking for doing better pull-ups, change your grip, do the split grip for a while, change the grip, do just sets of one. I've been teaching the boys over at the school, the middle school boys, how to do a lot of pull-ups lately. Uh, thanks, Dan, for becoming a, a virtual member of the dojo. Much appreciated. All right, the last thing I wanted to show you is that if you're carrying it like this, you might carry it like this because you don't want to carry it like this. You don't need it as a walking stick. So you're carrying it like this. I see a lot of people, uh, too, I, th I think I said all the time, I have two gentlemen, older gentlemen in the neighborhood, carry sticks this length every morning when they walk around the block and it's to protect themselves, it's to protect their little dogs. We've got gators, we've got bobcats, we've got coyotes, we've got pit bulls that are, you come into the neighborhood sometimes that are you know, not supposed to be there. And then you have uh, human beings who sometimes are not supposed to be there and it just gives them, they're all in their 70s, 80s, and 90s and always gives them a little bit of sense of extra protection. And I know for a fact, because I've talked to both of them, they both know how to use it. So from here, in this position, you get it to the other hand just by turning, you have that motion, pushing it here, coming down under here, boxing the sides of his ears over the top or turning palm up and then you have that sword all those basic strikes and thrusts coming through and smashing coming through here too coming right through his body through his his teeth for self-defense so that's the homemade self-defense walking stick the purpose of training with one of these you might not have this stick with you but again you might not be able to take this everywhere this might be not allowed if you show up to a court date or if you go to your kids uh, music recital at the school or your grandchild or you go to the plane or the train or the bus they're not letting you take this stick on it they won't <laughs> especially not just a stick they may be a walking stick if it looks like a walking stick but this isn't getting on the bus this isn't getting on the train however an umbrella will and again you get a nice sturdy and they're not very expensive umbrella that you might use for golf or just one that's that's rated and they sell self-defense umbrellas for a hundred plus and I was gonna uh, promote those but I don't really care for them I think they're just as good if you get an inexpensive thirty forty dollar umbrella or bumper shoot that you can carry and, it, and you might be in Great Britain Great Britain you're not allowed to carry one of these as I'm told over and over and over in the comment section but you can carry your umbrella and with the umbrella 
Same thing, you slide your hand down the front, bring it up between his legs, stick it through his eyes, smash on the side of his head, bring it down over the top, bust through his teeth, whatever you need to do to stay safe. Yeah, Nick says umbrellas are very common in the UK. Ian, thanks again, thanks for being here. I really appreciate everybody, thanks to the new members. I will, um, I'm working like a dog, I'm working 12 to 14 hours a day. Unlike since I am it, I haven't bought a new house, I didn't expand my dojo, and things are, things are kind of moving sideways. So many good things though. So I'm keeping a lot of people safe. Been doing a lot of self-defense training for adults and, um, and security, especially. I have a whole team now that I train. And one of the things we've been talking about recently is weapon retention, because all of our guards are armed and uh, they all have bad habits. They let, this is, this is something I wanted to add in this video and uh, thinking about how could I add it. I'm just gonna throw it in. Distance, right? Think about your distance. If you see somebody who's not supposed to be close to you, Dan, I'm in uh, uh, South Florida, down in uh, Palm Beach County. Thanks, Jim. Good to see you, Jacqueline. Great to see you. If you have somebody that you know is a threat or you don't feel comfortable with, always go with your gut. Don't let them get close to you. If they're this close, you're done. You, you're whoever hits first, throws the first punch. The other guy's getting hit, or the other girl's getting hit. So you're either going to get hit if they're this close. If they have a knife, you're really in trouble. This distance is a lot better, right? If I could go back there, you could still see me in the camera. Obviously, that distance is even better. If you can put something between you and that threat, then that's better too. If, you're, if there's a car involved, you can be on one side of the car, they're on the side of the hood. If there's a tree, if there's a park bench, if you can put yourself, think about things in your physical space where if you do need to, talk to somebody, and then put your hands up. And if you have your self-defense stick, your hands go like this, right? And if he does come close, then you can, from here, you can immediately respond to that threat with your self-defense walking stick or your umbrella, but at least you have this distance. Try to pay attention this week and see how close. Now, if you're on the train or you're on a bus and you have to be this close to somebody, uh, I remember the subways in Korea, you know, especially during rush hour, subways in Japan, you know, subways in Germany, when you're, you know, uh, New York City, uh, Washington, D.C., Chicago, all the places I've been on, on public transit, sometimes you're this close and you don't have that option. But you can, you know, if, if you're, you can stand like this, you can stand like this, your hands have to be this high once you get into that position. If you know that it's a definite threat, put your hands up, get them between you and him. You can step in, strike with that elbow very quickly. He throws a punch or he tries to hit. You want to close that distance and stick that through his teeth, through his face. But try to pay attention this week. That's kind of your homework. Create some distance. If you know it's somebody, and if you are in law enforcement, you already know this. Um, if you're in security, you should know it. You might not remember the training, which is why I'm reminding you. But create this distance. Keep distance between you and that threat when you have to talk to somebody or you, know, you have to see them. And if you can walk around them, don't worry about what it looks like. Walk around them. You'd rather look silly or have him feel uneasy or uncomfortable. Who knows why? People can't worry too much about what other people think. But learn how to create some distance between you and the threat. Yeah, JKS says you know, there was an armed robbery recently near where they live. There's so many uh, pressures being put on society right now that a lot of people are starting to feel that pressure as they fall out the bottom. In other words, there are more people going onto the streets because they can't afford rent or because they pick up an addiction because they're depressed and they lose everything. And there are a lot more desperate people and desperate people are doing desperate things. So situation awareness is always number one. Pay attention to what's happening as it's happening around you. I saw so many people. I was at the, the big church this morning, and I mean, it's a massive ser service. And, um, you know, I, I teach, take uh, church security very seriously. It's something that I study a lot. And one of, the, um, one of the people that I follow in church security, he posts this picture all the time, and it says, this is not what your church security guard should look like. And it's a <laughs> security guard on his phone. And this is the local PD that they have for church. They have their own security and they have PD and then they have paid security. And um, I, I watched this cop and he was a big man. He shook my hand and felt like he was gonna crush it. You know, he's one of those guys who wants to show me how strong he is, which is cool. And um, the whole time he's like this, not the whole time. I mean, he, he was paying attention a lot, but there were too many times. 
one time is enough, right? You need to check something, you need to respond. But if that's you and you have to be on your phone, put your back against the wall, hold your phone like this, do your thing, put it back in your pocket and stop looking at it. Especially if you're in a situation where you might not be safe or you're responsible for the safety of other people. Get that phone out of that distraction zone and get it in your pocket, put it in a bag, wherever it's supposed to be, but not in front of your face. And certainly not like this. When you're like this, no, anything can happen and you won't know it until it happens to you or it happens around you. So don't be caught victim of your own uh, mistake, right? That's a huge mistake. Security, pay attention. So pay attention, number one. Number two, get in a better position. Put one hand in front of the other one. Um, make yourself a smaller target. If I'm here, I'm big and square. You can see me here. Any part of my body you can strike. If I step here, now you gotta get through the hard bony surfaces of my arms. I, I can kick from this position. I can run from this position. I can take, someone can try to tackle me. I can sprawl if you know what sprawling is. I can stop them from taking me to the ground from this position. From this position, I'm an easy target. So if that's you, get in a better position. Make sure situational awareness, number one. Number two, better position. Number three, that's the question you ask. This all comes from Tim Larkin, his book, When Violence is the Answer. And if it's not in the link below, I'm gonna put it in as soon as we're done. When Violence is the Answer by Tim Larkin. What's the question? The question is, what can I remove or destroy? And you're thinking in terms of his ability to see, breathe, move, grab, stab, punch, choke, whatever it is. Are you breaking the wrist? Are you breaking the elbow? Are you hitting the head to knock him out? Are you striking that nerve in the neck to knock him out? Are you taking out his eyesight? Are you taking out his ability to breathe temporarily or permanently? If he's that kind of a threat, are you taking out his ability to breathe and stand up? Are you going lower? But the question, well, it'll answer itself. But you have to take a breath first. Just a little breath. Take your nerves down. Calm you down enough. Remember, you, you can't afford to slow down in self-defense. So there's a, a saying, this is a principle of self-defense. Slow or calm down, don't slow down. Learn how to calm down, but don't slow down. Don't go slow in self-defense. Go as fast as you can, and that'll probably be fast enough. But think about those basic principles of self-defense. Once you decide what you're going to strike, the next one is... Close with and destroy, right? Close that distance. Violence of action. Overwhelm him with as many strikes, uh, techniques that you can until he's on the ground and you're away safe. But those are basic principles of self-defense. We'll go over more of those later. Thank you again for being here. If you haven't subscribed already, please do that. Do the subscription um, or the notification bell. This content doesn't, doesn't always get promoted. It's probably me, but for whatever reason, if you do that, if you're interested, then by subscribing and hitting that bell, you'll get to know when we go live and you'll be able to train with us. And I appreciate all you guys uh, training with me today. Um, quick word, I see all these, these things about um, the pepper spray. I've done the research because I've said it before. I, I just repeated what other people said. That's a big mistake to make. I admit that. Uh, I said use the bear spray. Bear spray is not as effective as the pepper spray from what I've read from the studies. There's more capsaicin or there's more burning your face stuff in the uh, pepper spray than in the bear spray. Bear spray is not made for people. It's made for bears. So get a good pepper spray. Make sure your pepper spray, if you carry one on your keychain, they expire just like fire extinguishers do. And you go to get a fire extinguisher that's expired. That's why the fire department checks them every year. And they, you go to, to put out a fire and nothing comes out, you're in trouble. You go to spray someone with that pepper spray, nothing comes out, you're in trouble. Just remember when you do spray him and it's not just law enforcement that, you know, he's going to keep coming probably. And then you're both wearing the pepper spray. So make sure you know what it feels like um, or be prepared for it. You're going to be choking. Snot's going to be coming out your face, out of your eyeballs, out of your nose, out of your ears. But you, it's, it's a technique. It's something you can use if that's important to you. Maybe we'll make a video. We'll make a video. And I've been pepper sprayed many times. I'll take a pepper spray for the team. And then you can see what happens and how it chokes you up and makes it hard. But you can still fight through it. And that's the whole purpose of, of experiencing it is that you can learn how to deal with it and keep fighting, keep pressing the fight. You guys have been awesome.